There are endless videos about what to do physically on any given instrument in order to get better. Those are great. However, the biggest problem most musicians are confronted with is not in the body, it's in our minds. So here are 10 affirmations, things you could just say to yourself on a regular basis, like every time you pick up your instrument, that will gradually transform the way you make music. This affirmation technique is scientifically proven to work. The problem is that most musicians are constantly repeating negative affirmations to themselves, and those end up defining your musical identity. Have you ever said to yourself, I hate how I sound, or I suck, or I learn slowly, or I can't do that, it's too hard for me. Every time you say or think one of those negative things, you identify with that statement. You literally make it become reality. The beautiful thing is that this works in both directions. So if instead you say or think, I love how I sound, or I'm really good at music, or I can do this, you identify with those statements and make them become your reality. The following 10 affirmations are for saxophone players, but they can be applied to any other instrument and even other disciplines just by changing a few words. After you hear the list, let me know in the comments any affirmations you might add in case I missed any. Number one, I always play with my best sound and in tune. When we focus on our sound and intonation, those things always get better. If we're distracted by nerves or trying to execute difficult things, our sound and intonation may suffer from neglect. It's one of the first things that goes out the window if we aren't careful. So I like to identify myself as someone who always strives to play with their best sound and in tune. Now, mind you, I don't always succeed 100% of the time, but having that at the top of my mind really does help. Number two, I always play with solid rhythm. This one is just as important as the first. We cannot tolerate on any level playing with poor rhythm. It can't be something that we fix later on. Repeat this affirmation to yourself over and over again every time you play until it becomes part of your musical identity. Playing with solid rhythm and a beautiful sound is enough to make anybody a pleasure to listen to. Number three, I always take a full breath and fill the saxophone up with air. Repeating this one to yourself will help make it a habit. Not taking full breaths when you play the saxophone results in a poor sound, bad technique, and sloppy rhythm. Using your air properly does wonders for all aspects of your saxophone playing, and this applies to both playing loud and soft dynamics. Number four, I always stay physically relaxed when I'm playing and keep my fingertips on the key pearls as much as possible. Physical tension can be one of the biggest problems holding musicians back on all sorts of different instruments. It will take constant monitoring and reminding to break out of the habit of playing with that physical tension. Practice in front of a mirror and check yourself all the time. Once you identify yourself as a musician that always plays with relaxed hands and wrists and shoulders and neck, your sound, technique, and rhythm will all improve steadily. Now, if you're enjoying the message of this video, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the Better Sax newsletter. Every week, I send an email out to our subscribers with links to the latest content we've posted on the various platforms, as well as tips on how to become a better sax player. As a bonus, everyone subscribed to the newsletter gets access to the Better Sax Shed, which is a free resource containing tons of video lessons that have MP3 and PDF downloads to go with them, I put a link where you can sign up in the description. And if you could take a moment right now to click the like button, and we would love to count you amongst our over 315,000 subscribers if you aren't already. All right, now back to the affirmations number five. I always play with clean technique. A person who plays with clean technique is one who practices slowly enough to notice every tiny imperfection and is able to correct them. Practice slowly and take the time to correct all those little finger glitches by isolating and smoothing out those key transitions. Make that a habit and over time you will become the sort of saxophone player that always plays with clean technique. Number six is super important. I practice the saxophone daily because 
I enjoy the process and it makes me feel good. Why do you practice? I know my motivation for practicing has often been because I have to learn this or that thing, because I feel like I'm not good enough yet, or because I feel I want to impress others. Any of that sound familiar? If we flip the script and our motivation for practicing becomes the way it makes us feel good and the fact that we enjoy the process, the way we practice changes for the better. Try it. Number seven, I always listen to the other musicians I'm playing with. This one applies at every level, whether you're playing in the school band or a rock band, or you're just playing along with backing tracks. We could easily end up playing most of the time solo, so it's very important to not forget to listen to the other musicians when we're in a group. A performance where all the musicians are listening intently to one another sounds entirely different to one where the musicians are all just listening to themselves. Number eight, I always learn the melodies to songs I play by listening to recordings. If you need to read sheet music in order to learn a melody, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But these days, there is no excuse to learn songs with sheet music alone. This goes for all styles of music, classical, jazz, pop. Listen to great performances of songs to learn how to phrase, stylistic nuances, and what it sounds like when it's done right. Number nine, I always play the chord changes and outline the harmony. I know all the chords to any song I want to improvise over. This one applies to improvising musicians. Make it a unbreakable rule that you always know the underlying harmony before you go improvising over a song. Don't wing it. Don't fake it. Learn the chords and make it clear to anyone listening that you know them. If you identify yourself in this way, that's the sort of player you will become. I saved the most important one for last, number 10. I never compare myself to others, and I never judge myself based on how I play music. There will always be musicians that play better than us. This is a good thing, and we need to treat it as a positive rather than feel intimidated. Without the example of those further along on the journey, how would we know which direction to go in? I'll admit that this one is difficult for me to put into daily practice, but if we can stop judging ourselves and stop comparing ourselves to others, we can actually free ourselves to make much better music. If you come out of traditional Western musical education, this can be especially difficult since that system is built on comparing and judging ourselves against others. Start on learning that part of your musical education now. It can take a while and be difficult, but it's so worth it. Now I've got another motivational video for you to watch next. Check it out here.